Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So I want to start a new project based on one of my favorite games, a game by Vlambeer Studios who makes some fantastic indie games. This is called Super Crate Box. And let's have a look at the game and then let's make our own version of it in Scratch. So first thing is we actually have a level select. I haven't unlocked any of the other levels just yet, but we'll remember that for future. Once we go into the normal level, let's see what this looks like. Okay, we've got a character. We can jump, we can shoot, uh, we can uh, walk around on these platforms, and if we hit an enemy, we die. Okay, we've got one life and that's it. Now there's a little crate here. If I pick this up, my weapon actually changes and it's much better, much more powerful. How do we get points in this game? Well, watch very carefully. You only get a point when you get one of the crates. Watch, it's currently one at the top there, and now, if I get this crate, now I have two points. It doesn't actually matter how many enemies you shoot, you still don't get any more points unless you collect the crates. So let's have a look what the enemies are doing. Can you see what happens when they reach the bottom, that little bit of fire? If they reach this bit of fire here, they actually spawn again at the top, but this time they'll be red, they'll be faster, and they'll be tougher. Can you see that one at the top there? What happens if we touch the fire? Okay, we die. All right, that's good to know. So let's get into Scratch. Let's start putting down some of our ideas and then let's start making our own version of Super Crate Box. Now, one of the hardest things to figure out when we're starting a new project is where do we begin? What we're actually going to do now is we're gonna take this big intimidating game and break it down into smaller pieces and then we're going to work through those pieces individually. So this next section is going to be us planning out the project and if I was doing this for my own personal project I would probably use maybe Word or Notepad or maybe even just a piece of paper and a pencil but I'm actually going to use the backdrop of our Scratch project just so you can see what we've figured out and it's all in the same place. So this next bit you don't have to do in your Scratch project if you don't want to, but it is good to see how we're going to plan out the next couple of sessions. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this cat, then I'm going to hover over where it says choose a backdrop, move up and click paint a backdrop, and this is where we're going to do our planning. I'm going to click here so that I can do a nice big the plan, nice and big and I'm also going to make this a nice official black color. Okay, so what are the different parts of the game that we need to make? Well, we need to have the player, uh, the platforms, um, we need to have different types of weapons, we need to have enemies, we need to have the crate that gives us the different types of weapons and also gives us our points. And we need to have the flames at the bottom of the level that uh, enhance the enemies and kill us if we touch them. Okay, now we're not gonna get to all of this at once. So I'm going to use this tool to move some of these across to the right. We're gonna focus on the player and on the platforms. What do we need the platforms to do? Well, the player needs to not go through the platforms. We're going to call that collide with player. It's important that the player can stand on the platforms and not sink through them. So we also need that level select, maybe not straight away, but later on we want to be able to change the level. So what do we need the player to be able to do? Well they need to be able to move, they need to be able to shoot, and they need to be able to die. Let's think about what types of movement does the player do? Move right, move left, we need to be able to make them jump, they need to be able to fall back down as well. Call that gravity. This is a really important process because we're taking these big ideas and we're breaking them up into smaller ideas, looking at them in more detail. I'm going to highlight these and that way we know what our focus is for today. Let's create our platform sprite. We're going to hover over here. We're going to move up twice to where it says paint. We're going to use this box tool Let's choose a fill. I'm gonna go for like a dark 
screen. Now I'm going to show you how I would do this in a way that makes sure that all the platforms are level and that none are accidentally thicker or taller than the others. So I am going to start off by making the bottom of the map. So that needs to be these two big sections and a gap in the middle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make one shape here, then I'm going to make a copy of it. Click on copy and then click on paste. And now we have this duplicate. You can also press control C on your keyboard and control V on your keyboard to make more copies. Now I'm going to move this one and lock it into the middle by getting that little cross to lock into the crosshairs right here. And I'm going to then press the left arrow on my keyboard to move it all the way over to the left. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one, but I'm gonna move it all the way to the right. Now you can see these two platforms are the same height. Now we've got to think about how big we want the gap to be. Click on this here, drag a box so that you've got both of them selected and center them again. And now we've got this perfect little space in the middle. And all you need to do is press the down arrow on our keyboard and move them to the bottom of the screen. That looks pretty good, I think. So we need to do the top. The top can look exactly the same as the bottom. So I'm going to control C, control V, move that into the middle, then press the up arrow, do some walls on the side. And I'll do this one here. And then the next thing we need are some platforms in the middle for our character to jump between. So I want some very skinny little ones. I'll drag this into the middle, control C, control V, and we'll move this off to the left. And then I'll do the same with the other one, move this off to the right. And then we can grab them and just make sure they're nicely centered like this. Okay, now I'm going to copy one of these, Control C, Control V, but I'm gonna make this a lot longer. Move that into the middle, move it up again, and I'll Control C, Control V, and do the same thing for a little platform along the bottom as well. Something very important is to make sure that everything is named correctly in your project. So Sprite One, terrible name. Awful, let's change that. Click right here and let's call it platforms. Now you'll also notice that while everything is beautifully centered right here, it's all completely in the wrong position over here. So let's make some code that ensures our platforms are always dead in the middle of the screen. Click on code over here, go to events, we're going to get out when green flag clicked. Remember, this is what will happen when the game begins, when we click this green flag here. Now we want to make sure that the platforms are always in the middle of the screen. So we're going to go to motion, this category here. We're going to get out, go to X and Y, drag that and put it here. And for this to be the middle of the screen, we're going to change the X to zero and the Y to zero. Okay, let's test that to see if it works. When we click this button, excellent. The platforms are all nicely in the middle of the screen. Now at this point, if you think that any of these are a bit too thick or a bit too thin, you can change them up. I'm just gonna move this up a little bit, move that down a little bit. Now we've still got our plan up as the backdrop. So let's make a new backdrop. Um, let's hover over here, click on choose a backdrop. Now you can choose whatever you like for your game. The slopes, there we go, that looks pretty nice. Or if we wanted, we could have maybe a city. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Now this will be really useful when we later on have different maps and different levels. But for now, just choose one that's your favorite. Now the next step is we're going to make our player. And we're actually going to make our player a box. And you might be asking yourself, why? Why does our player need to be a box? Well, let me try to explain. Imagine we chose our player to be something else, any of these characters. Let's say, for example, the cat. Have a look at the sprite of the cat. They have all these sticking outy bits like the whiskers, the ears, the arms, the legs, the tail. Now, just imagine 
we code our cat so that it can't go through the platforms, which is good. We don't want it to be able to fall through the platforms and we don't want it to be able to go into the walls. But then we could actually have this weird situation where the cat would walk off the platform and then get stuck on its whiskers. Wouldn't that look really weird? Whereas if the player is a box, that kind of behavior wouldn't happen. There's no sticky outy bits in a box. Now, later on, we're going to put in some code that makes it so that our player will not look like a box, but all the coding side of things are going to treat the player as if they are a box. This is actually called a hitbox. It's very common in computer game coding. Okay, so we're going to hover over here. We're going to move up to and click on paint. Uh, you can choose whatever color you like. And then we're gonna draw a little box. Then we're going to make sure the box is nicely centered by dragging it, that that little cross goes into the middle there. And there is our player. And of course, we've got to remember to name them. Sprite one is a terrible name. We're going to call this player. So let's go to the code section of the player. And what's the first thing that we want the player to do? Well, we want them to have a starting position. So drag them to the position you want them to start in. I'm gonna put them just about here. Then we're going to go to events, the yellow category. We're going to get out when green flag clicked and we're going to go to motion. And we're going to get out a go to X and Y. This number and this number should roughly correspond to this position. Drag out this here, and then once you've done that, drag the player off somewhere and hit go, and they should go back to their starting position. Okay, next step is we want the player to be able to move. So let's go to control. Let's get out a forever loop because these are all actions that we want the player to do continually over and over and over again, as long as we're pressing the right buttons or as long as the right thing is happening. Now we could put all the code in one big lump right here in the forever loop, but that would actually be quite hard to read. I'm going to break things up so it's a bit easier for you to see which parts do what. And the way I'm gonna do this is with my blocks. So if you click on my block, right here and then click on make a block we're going to make our own block and we're going to give it the name move right click on ok here and we've got now we've got this define move right and we've also got this over here a little move right block so these little blocks they behave like all the other types of blocks what do they do well we decide. What you actually do is fill this up with code and everything that's inside the define move right will be inside each move right block. You can think about it almost like a Minecraft chest. This is the actual chest and when you open it, everything inside the chest is here and you can get to it. In programming, we call these functions. They're really useful ways of organizing code. You can take something quite large and complicated, package it up into a very small little package, and every time you use that, it summons all of the large complicated code you put inside it. Move right my block isn't gonna to be too complicated. To start off with, let's go to control. Let's get out an if then, Let's put it underneath the define move right. This is going to be the control that we want on the keyboard that makes our character move to the right. So that should be the right arrow. Let's go to sensing the light blue category. Let's get out key space pressed, drag that over. And you can see this six sided shape will slot just nicely into that six sided hole, that little hexagon hole. Then we're going to click on where it says space and change this to right arrow. Now remember, there are two dimensions in Scratch, and in fact, in every 2D game. And the name of those dimensions are X and Y. X controls sideways movement, and Y controls up and down movement. So if we want our player to move right, we need to change the X. So let's go to motion and have a look for change X by 10. Let's drag that in just there. Let's hit go and let's see if it works. It does work, excellent. All right, so now we need to put in define move left. Let's go to my blocks. 
let's click on make a block. We'll call this move left. We'll press OK. We'll drag this right here. And we can actually copy a lot of this code, move our mouse over this if, right click, then normal click on duplicate and put this right underneath define move left. But we'll need to change some things. Let's change the right arrow into left arrow. And there's one more thing we'll need to change. Changing X by 10 makes us move right. So if we want to move left, we need to move the opposite of 10, which is actually minus 10. Now let's test it and see if it works. We hit go, we move right, and now we'll try and move left, but it's not working. Why not? Well, this define move left is just sitting by itself doing nothing because we haven't summoned it. We haven't put it right here. Let's drag out a move left block, put it right there, and now it is being called or summoned or invoked right here in the forever loop. So now we can move right and we can move left. Now this character is actually moving a little bit too fast for me. So I am going to change this 10 into a six and this minus 10 into a minus six. And let's give that a test. Okay, I like that a lot better. It might seem like it's slow, but remember, when we're playing it on the maximum screen, it will look a lot faster. Now there's one more thing we need to fix. We can go straight through the walls right now, which we definitely don't want to happen. So we need to create some collision. If our character moves into the wall, we need to make sure that they move back out of it again. Let's go to control. Let's get out an if then, and let's put it right here. We're going to do this for our define move right to begin with. And we're going to see if the character is touching the platforms. Let's go to sensing the light blue category. Let's get out touching mouse pointer, put that into the gap right here, but change this mouse pointer into platforms. Then we want to move the character back the exact opposite direction, the exact opposite amount if they are in the platforms. So if we've got change X by six here, we want change X by minus six if we're touching the platforms. So let's see if we can now, excellent. We are right up against the wall there and you might have a little bit of a gap. And if you have a gap, don't worry, that's something that we're gonna fix later. Of course, we also need to do this for our move left. Otherwise, we'll be able to move into the wall and then we'll get stuck in the wall. So let's copy this if touching platforms and put it right here. But again, we want this to be the opposite of this. So if this is minus six, this needs to be six. All right, let's give that another test now. Move to the right, excellent. Move to the left, very good. There's that gap that I talked about. Don't worry, that's normal. We're gonna fix that later. That's all we've got time for this week. As always, subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next, or if you need any help with your code. I can't answer the comments like I used to, but if you're an experienced scratcher, maybe have a look at the comments, see if you can offer any advice for the younger coders out there. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.